This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be the early 2022 Ultimate Gaming Mouse tier list. This time we have 80 mice, lots of new additions, and this is a timestamp, so if you just want to skip to whatever mouse you're interested in, um, feel free to do that. However, I do not encourage it. You should absorb all of the information being presented. And last thing before getting into the list, in honor of these over 80 mice, if I could get 80 new subscribers, I would be forever grateful. But the first mouse of the list, the Booga Mouse, kicking it off with a bang, a horrible mouse. Going in the dog shit tier. Really, nothing good to say about it. Booga teamed up with Five Below to sell cheap garbage, and that's basically how it is. Um, they haven't made Booga Mouse 2, which is disappointing. Now we have the G Wolf Skull. This was a mouse that was sort of popular in 2019, 2020. It was an EC1 clone from G Wolves. For the time, it was cool. It was a large, lightweight mouse, but it was sort of low quality, didn't keep up with time, and they don't update it anymore, so not really worth it. The Skull Mini. It's just a mini version of the Skull. This mouse was really light. It was under 50 grams, which for when it came out, the only other mouse that light was like the Ultralight too. So very light, not great quality, not something I really recommend, but if you want a mini lightweight Ergo, I guess it's an option. Um, both of those mice are wired, by the way. Now we have the original G303. Gonna go in the D tier. Really has one of the worst cables out of any mouse. And there's just no reason to buy it anymore because the Shroud G303 exists. It's not the exact same shape, um, but it's a much more modern version. has Logitech's Hero Sensor in it. The quality on the Shroud version is good. It's around 10 grams lighter than the original version, but the shape is just what keeps me from using it. It only works for aggressive claw grip styles, and even if you do that grip, there's no guarantee you're going to like the mouse. So that's what keeps it out of the top tiers, but I mean, it's a good option if you like the G303 shape, even though it is larger. Now we have the glorious mice. For the wired ones, these are just going to go in the C tier. Even though they're $50, they're just not great mice. They don't have the quality updates that the wireless glorious mice do. The Model O my wireless doesn't have these updates either. But the Model D minus wireless, the Model D wireless, and the Model O minus wireless, these are slightly a cut above the rest of the glorious mice. Um, they have kale switches and just general build improvements. So I can't recommend the O wireless or just really any of the standard glorious mice, but the newer wireless ones do seem to be improving. It's also worth mentioning that the battery life on glorious mice is among the worst. I would actually say the worst of any mouse you're going to see on this list. I've tried to bully them into fixing it, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be an easy fix. So just keep that in mind. Um, the mice really aren't anything like cutting edge. They're just available options if you're interested in the pretty basic shapes that they offer. FK clone, EC clone, you know. They need to make some fucking new shapes. Now we have Vaxi. Um, the Outset AX is one of the higher quality ergo mice on the market. If you want a mouse to really fill out your palm and provide a lot of stability, the Outset AX is a great option. It's a very, like, the mouse gives me CSGO vibes, you know, like the type of mouse that a CSGO player would use, but modern and quite good, honestly. Um, it's like an EC1A, but not the same shape, but the same vibe, if you're getting what I'm getting at. Next up, we have the NPO1 and the NPO1S from Vaxi. In a purely objective tier list, these would be in the same tier because it's the same specs, just a the NPO1S is a smaller version. But my experience with the NPO1S is drastically better than the NPO1 shape. So I'm going to throw the NPO1 in the B tier um, because I think it's a perfectly fine quality mouse. It was just way bulkier and like thicker in hand than the NPO1S, which has a thin grip with feels very nimble and just awesome shape for claw. Um, so it's going to come down to preference for these Vaxi mice, but that's how I rate them personally. The thing with Vaxi mice though is I hate the stock cables. They're pretty thick and heavy, so I would recommend picking up either a lethal cable or a paracord, um, something to help with the feeling of the wire. Next up is the XM1R, which is probably the best value wired mouse. It truly is a full package for $60. Um, but it, not really related to the mouse, but Endgame needs to release the XM1 wireless. It's been announced for around two months now, and there's just still no data attached to it. So they've had this one wired mouse forever, and it's still a great mouse, great shape for claw. But man, they need to release the XM1 wireless. Doesn't change the fact that it's based, though. Now we have the GPX, which is my personal main, my in my opinion, the greatest mouse of all time. 
on my desk right now. 60 grams, wireless, battery lasts practically forever. And when it released, it was clearly so far ahead of its time. We have mice coming out now, like the Katana Superlight Fanatic Bolt, which are trying to like emulate it, but the GPX did it a year and a half ago. Not a year and a half, but over a year ago. Um, so I just cannot say enough good about the GPX. I haven't had a single instance of double clicking, obviously, since they fixed that issue. But people always comment like, oh, I hate Logitech. They double click. This shit doesn't double click, dude. Um, but yeah, GPX creme de la creme of mice. Now we have the Bearded Bob GPX, which is another based mouse. Shout out to Bearded Bob. This is the Bearded Bob GPX. I just said 60 grams was light. This thing is over 20 grams lighter. Or is it 20 grams? Like 18 grams lighter. It's in the low 40s. Basically, Bearded Bob is a mouse modder who specializes in drilling and weight reduction. And he actually did send me out one of his creations um, a few months back. And I had a good time with it. it I don't prefer it over the standard GPX. Um, but man, too cool to leave out of the tier list. Now we have the Steel Series Prime Wireless. Man, I would throw this in the D tier. I just had such a bad experience with the mouse, and there were some latency do tests done with the clicks, and it turns out that the response time is pretty shit on them, the, despite the magnetic optical switch or whatever the technology was, the gimmick attached to it. It just wasn't good. The weight on the Prime Wireless is nothing special, and the shape just has more ridges than any other mouse I've used. It feels like a prototype that was just never actually flattened out. There were so many positive reviews of it. I was thinking to myself like am i using the same mouse as these people um but yeah steel series mice not really good you know what is good though the sponsor of this video squarespace an all-in-one platform that allows you to easily build an online presence and run your business with fully fledged e-commerce you can sell anything whether that be physical or virtual goods services and even members only content squarespace has it all with hundreds of pre-made templates to help streamline the process squarespace provides website analytics that allow you to understand your audience by showing page views, traffic sources, geography, and more, along with the detailed commerce analytics for your business. The best part is that Squarespace websites come with built-in tools to take the guesswork out of SEO, and all websites are optimized for viewing on any device. If that sounds good, head to squarespace.com for a 14-day trial, and once you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash boardsy, and use code boardsy for 10% off your first purchase of a web website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Next up is another SteelSeries mouse, the AROX 3 wireless, or the wired one, whichever, um, going in the D tier. This mouse, people m claimed that it was updated. I tried the Ghost version, the supposedly updated one. I still had horrible issues with creaking on the shell, creaking with the buttons. It was just, the mouse is basically doomed. They did fix the mouse skates though, so at least they don't scrape on the pad anymore. Um, but yeah, the mouse has a really weird low sensor position, and it's just not an ambi mouse that I recommend. Um, but yeah, I, that's going to leave it at that. Next up is the Extrify MZ1. This is going atop of the B tier. I would love to put this in base or A tier, but both of my copies that I had just had tons of creaking on the shell, like worse than a glorious mouse. The MZ1 is a really unique shape, though. I would say it's great for fingertip. It allows you to feel really locked in because of the comfort grooves on the click. Some people say that they're too aggressive, but I don't think people should be critiquing Sir Rocket Jump Ninja's great design. Um, so yeah, that's where the MZ1's going. All around, sick mouse, just wish they made a wireless version. What are you doing, Extra Fi? If the MZ1 wireless was around 40 grams with no shell creaking, no RGB, that would be a truly incredible mouse. Uh, but something like the M4 wireless and Ergo wireless, come on, dude, that's an oversaturated market extra five. We don't want that. Um, all jokes aside, I mean, the M4 wireless was a pretty solid mouse. The buttons did feel really cheap. Um, so did the actual plastic coating. And the mouse is a bit overpriced, I would say, at $100. It has an adjustable weight balancing gimmick. Wow, that thing was useless. But yeah, just saw it's like a B tier mouse, has good specs. Um, good enough performance, but just nothing truly special. Just a wireless version of their past shape. Now we have the Pulsar X Lite Wireless, which I would say that's in the top of the B tier. This is a more reasonably priced wireless Ergo. It's $75.00. Obviously, it's far from a perfect mouse, and the in-hand feeling just isn't as high quality as something like a GPX, but the X-Lite Wireless, really good value if you're looking for an EC2-style shape. 
in the wireless form factor for a reasonable price. They have a V2 version coming out, which fixes some of the issues I had, like weight balancing, just the amount of holes on the side. Now I look at it as a more affordable wireless mouse option, and you just buy it knowing that you're not going to get the highest quality mouse on the market, but you do get solid performance and a lightweight at around 60 grams. Next up, Logitech G203, my first mouse, so it has a special place in my heart. Considering the fact that you can sometimes find it for $20, it's an undoubtedly good value. Um, but the features of the mouse aren't really like up there with what people consider like the top modern standards. Uh, for example, it's the Mercury sensor, unless you get the Hero version, in which case you get the Hero sensor. You get a rubber cable, just standard Logitech stock feet. So it's a true budget mouse, and the shape is not going to be for everyone, but it does have a cult-like following it. I don't know, I'm a fan of the egg shape, what can I say? Now the Logitech G703, this is either C or B tier, I guess it could go in B tier. I picked it up on sale for $60, which was an insane value. But the mouse itself does have issues like scroll wheel creaking, um, double clicking issues, which are like really prevalent on this mouse. I've heard with the main clicks and the side buttons, not a great weight. It will feel a lot better if you switch out the stock skates though. It's a good ergo shape for both claw and palm in my experience with pretty large 20 by 11 centimeter hands. But Logitech needs to make an updated super light version. Seriously can't understand why they don't. Uh, well, I can probably won't sell well, but you should still do it anyway, Logitech. Learn to help people. Um, now we have the BTL or the Vanser Gretza, and this is another mouse that is going into the B tier. The B tier is filling up quite quickly. It's essentially a budget version of the medium final mouse size. It has some interesting cutouts on the side. The good thing about this mouse is that it is really cheap. It's around $65 on Amazon, and you get a 3370 Kale 8.0s. The weight is really nothing impressive, and probably the thing that separates it from Final Mouse the most. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a worse, sort of heavier budget version of the Starlight 12 Medium. Um, but yeah, you can't deny it's a good shape and value. Next up are my least favorite mice in existence, Clones of the S2. This includes the Ponage Sim 1, the Rock Talon, I think is the Filipino version. Um, the Xenix Titan GX Air, just all of these shitty mice that are just worse versions of the Zowie S2, which is an absolute based mouse. The S2C, one of my favorite mice in my top three personally, but the clones just provide a lower quality and worse experience. I just don't recommend buying any of them if the normal S2 is an option. Um, the Zowie C series is great. They've updated the cables, lowered the weights. The in-hand feeling of the S2C is kind of just unmatched. Insanely good. Now the Viper Mini, another based mouse. Best budget mouse of all time, in my opinion. Um, nothing re is really doing it at $30 like the Viper Mini. You get a mouse in the low 60 gram range that has a good shape for fingertip or claw. Some of the lowest click latency out of any mouse with the Razer Opticals. Passable cable in a bungee and decent stock skates. Really, the only flaw of it is the notoriously high LOD, but at this point, there are hundreds of remedies for that. Another thing to mention is that it has a plastic sensor ring on it, and it can scratch your mouse pad. You can just sand that down if it's an issue. Um, but yeah, that's a very minor thing. Overall, the Viper Mini is insane for $30. Still stand by that recommendation. Over two years later, I turned off my lights and put on dark mode because I was going blind. Regardless, next mouse is the Rocket Cone Pure Ultra. I would say this is a mouse you can just afford to avoid. Comes with pretty bad features, a rubber cable and shitty stock feet. So you do want to switch those out if you want to like make the most out of the mouse. Um, but yeah, at this point in 2022, it's probably not worth buying. Did have a really good rubbery feeling coating, unlike any other mouse, and a shape that allowed a really locked-in feeling if it worked for your style of claw grip. But in general, I think Rocket has some better mice out at this point. Next up, the Extrify M42. I would say this is another mouse going in the B tier. It's a wired mouse from Extrify. Once again, they need to make a wireless version. Um, doesn't come with the good cable they put on the MZ1, but it does come with a good shape and a unique feature where you can adjust the back hump to either have a Zowie ZA style hump or a FK style hump to accommodate your grip style. And in real use, this mouse felt really good. So nothing crazy spec wise, just a good performing mouse from Extrify. I did have issues with shell creaking, but other than that, it was just fine. Um, I did wind up replacing the cable though. Next up, Rocket Cone Pro Air. I'm going to throw this in the A tier, a really good performing wireless mouse from Rocket. 
The cone pro shape is definitely on the large side, really comfortable for my style of claw grip though, and a good shape for palm grip. The clicks on the KPA are Rockets Opticals, so they have a really dull and weak feeling to them, but the performance is good, and if it's something you can deal with, then this mouse will probably be elite for you. It's definitely one of the highest quality wireless ergos on the market. They make a wired version as well. I think it's pretty cheap, so yeah, Cone Pro, solid mouse. Next up is the Viper Ultimate, which is honestly somewhat hard to criticize because of how good these specs are and how cheap it is nowadays at around $90 for the mouse and the dock. Um, but this mouse definitely has flaws and I've never been able to enjoy it um, like some of the mice in the base tier. First off, side buttons on both sides, the side buttons being recessed in general. Side button design was pretty bad. The shape in general is flat, which is just going to come down to preference, but even compared to other FK style shapes, the Viper Ultimate was one that I could just never comfortably grip. It has V2 optical switches in them, but still after extended use, the buttons get creaky and just lack any like tactility or integrity. It's kind of bad, but the response on them is still good. And while I definitely have some nitpicks with the mouse, those mattered more when it was a $150 mouse compared to the $100 mouse that it is currently. And and the wireless performance is incredible with the Focus Plus sensor. Next up is the Orochi V2 from Razer, which I don't recommend as strongly, but I'm still going to throw it in the A tier. I think it's a really good wireless mouse for fingertip grip and if you have small to medium hands for claw grip. But if you have large hands, pulling off a consistent claw grip is going to be really hard due to how short the mouse is and just forget about palm grip. The Orochi also uses batteries, which I know is a huge turnoff for some people. I kind of like it because you can adjust the weight pretty easily. You can get the mouse into the low 60s with just a lighter battery. It also has Bluetooth features. It's marketed more as a on-the-go productivity mouse from Razer, um, but it certainly works really well in game, fine performance. My one issue is just low quality feeling buttons because the top shell is swappable, but the Orochi V2 is still a really good mouse if you're into small mice. Now the HK Gaming now sem dog shit. Wow, I just remembered how bad that mouse is. Um, it's like an S2 clone, but even worse than the ones I was complaining about earlier. Thank God HK Gaming stopped making mice. Leave a like if you're happy HK Gaming stopped making mice. Model O minus going with all of the other glorious mice I talked about earlier. Rocket Kane 200, is this the Minecraft one? If it's a Minecraft mouse, that's friggin' based, yo. Um, if not, it's a dog shit brick. Next up is the Burst Pro from Rocket. This is a large mouse designed for claw grip, and now it's on sales for under $50. So it's a good value. I just can't, I there's no way I could recommend it to somebody over an XM1R. I feel like it's kind of outclassed, but it's an option. It does have a sort of cheap plasticky feel to it. And the Rocket optical switches, which are very dull and mushy. But yeah, it's hard to recommend, but it's an available cheap mouse for claw grip. The Atom Palm Hydrogen, this is based and never going to release pilled. It's kind of just an ongoing meme. I, it has been getting some project updates it's recently but yeah i would love to see the day when this mouse releases but i don't think i ever will um so yeah i'm gonna go down there cooler master mm711 definitely the d tier just really low quality these things are on sale for like 20 dollars at walmart sometimes so that is the target audience of the mm711 there's rumors that a wireless version's coming soon um, but yeah, the buttons, the shell, just everything about this mouse is low quality feeling. Um, but yeah, hopefully they release a refined one because that's going to happen. Now we have the Deluxe M800. I would say this belongs in either top of the C tier or low B tier. The Deluxe M800 is a pretty random mouse by a Chinese brand called Deluxe, but this shape is inspired by the Viper Mini. It's a wireless mouse. 3335 with decent wireless performance for the price. It doesn't compare to something like the Superlight, obviously, but for $45, it is a passable gaming experience. Just really shitty side buttons, bad stock skates. Um, it's like a budget wireless mouse, so yeah, it belongs in the C tier. Can't really be argued above that. The final mouse, Starlight 12, the mouse I am using to make this tier list, I'm going to put it in the base tier. The Starlights are a very controversial mouse because of the very limited availability and the $190 price, even if you are lucky enough to get one from a drop. I've missed out on both of the online drops so far, but I actually did fly out to California to buy this Pegasus version at Final Con. It's the all-white one. 
Um, so I guess that counts as securing a drop. But getting to the mouse itself, the Starlights are the lightest wireless mice on the market. 42 grams for the small size, which is the same shape as the Ultralight 2, and 49 grams for this medium size, which is slightly larger. They do feel incredible in hand. If you want a lightweight mouse, the Starlights probably have the best feeling to them. Not so much better than the GPX that it's worth paying like 2x. Um, for the scalper prices, but from a drop, I do encourage people to check it out if they if they think the mouse is for them. And Final Mouse does have more drops planned. It seems like they really do want to keep producing Starlights. The Poseidon's supposed to come out early 2022, so I mean, sometime soon. And they have the Tens Mouse, which is dropping in the summer. In terms of quality and durability, I have mainly good things to say about mine. One of my copies had some shell creaking. But when I adjusted the screws on the bottom of the mouse, it actually fixed the issue. So I'm not sure if they could just improve on the screw tolerances in future drops, or it might have been an issue due to the Ultim base. Not sitting flush with the magnesium shell, but regardless, I fixed it. And aside from that, my Starlights have felt great. I know people have experienced QC issues worse than mine, which is obviously something you do not want to see on such a premium product. But in general, on the Starlights I've used, including this one I've had since the original drop, um, really no issues with wear or tear, any like cr creaking, flexing. Um, but yeah, a lot of my units have been sent out by Final Mouse, which is worth mentioning for transparency. Um, but yeah, moving on to the G-Wolves HSK. This is a fingertip only mouse. It's going to wind up in the D tier. The mouse does not have side buttons. It's pretty pricey. The cable on it isn't great. But lucky for us, G-Wolves has an HSK Plus which is going to be wireless and features side buttons. So that is something to look forward to. But this OG HSK, um, honestly, not worth buying. The Ultralight 2, hmm, I don't know where to put this. Either B, yeah, right next to the MZ1. These are some great fingertip mice. The Ultralight 2 is a classic. It was $120 from Final Mouse, which for a wired mouse was a lot of money. It was the lightest mouse at the time. Um, but still, if you can pick one up used under 100 maybe even a modded one. I feel like that's a like top tier wired mouse, but it's kind of just hard to recommend buying a used old mouse. Okay, New Day, same tier list. I think I was on the Ultralight 2. This was my main mouse for a while back in 2020. My rant about the Infinity skins was kind of why I started uploading. So definitely respect the mouse, but I wouldn't recommend like overpaying for one in 2022. Next up, Death Adder V2 Pro. I think maturing is realizing that this is just a solid mouse. Has the same specs as the Viper Ultima with the Focus Plus sensor and the optical switches. The clicks do feel absolutely terrible. It's the one downside of this mouse, but really everything else, like even the in-hand feeling and the weight, it's just not bad. It's one of the better wireless ergos I have used, um, surprisingly. Next up, we have the Hot ES Wired. This is going in the B tier. A lot of people know about the G-Wolves Hot ES at this point. The Hot ES Wired is under 50 grams with a shape that accommodates claw grip and fingertip. The problem with the Hot ES are generally after a lot of hard use, the buttons and the shell would get creaky. It does seem like G-Wolves is trying to improve on this with the Hot ES Wireless, which is somewhere. Um, but the thing with the Hot ES Wireless is this thing is fucking expensive. It costs more money than a G Pro X Super Light. And for a G-Wolves mouse, that is a hard pill to swallow, but the performance on the Hot ES Wireless is getting better. They have a well-implemented 3370, uh, but I'm looking forward to G-Wolves' new alloy mice, which I honestly don't know when they're going to come out, but G-Wolves is working on a lot of stuff that could definitely be in the uh, top tiers, in my opinion. Now we have the HyperX Pulsefire Haste. I will throw this in the A tier. Um, it's just a really good budget mouse. It's an FK shape. I think HyperX sells it for around $40. Once again, they have a wireless version coming soon. The mouse has a 3335 sensor. When it first dropped, there were issues with, I think, LOD and DPI deviation. But I think they fixed those via firmware updates. And the quality all around on the Haste is pretty good. One of my units had a bit of creaking at the bottom. But it didn't really break the mouse. And it's still a solid budget mouse from HyperX. Uh, what the fuck is this? The GM41 Wireless? Who made this? Um, MSI. Wow. You guys just saw me forget this mouse exists in real time. I think that just proves it's dog shit. I think it was like close to the Viper shape. It has Omron 60Ms, a really long mouse. 
Um, but yeah, kind of forgot it existed. G502, the best mouse of all time. Linus Tech Tips said so. I know you guys saw that video. But in all seriousness, I think the G502 is both overhated and overloved. I feel like I'm the only person to give a completely unbiased viewpoint of the G502. Um, like, if you have a stock G502 Hero, that is going to be terrible for FPS. But if you have a modded G502 Lightspeed, if you like the shape and don't mind the heavy weight, then it's a perfectly fine mouse and all of the other features are pretty based. So it's going to go back in the base tier. Um, because I had a pretty decent experience with the Lightspeed one. Now, the Logitech G Pro Wireless, I always throw this in dog shit here and just get so many comments for it, so I guess I'll explain why I'm doing it. I obviously don't think the G Pro Wireless is as bad as the Booga Mouse, I just don't think it's worth buying when the GPX exists and is basically a more refined mouse in every way with the same shape. Of course, unless you're disabled and use the mouse with your left hand, in which case the G Pro Wireless is better, because it has right-handed side buttons. Regardless, it's 20 grams heavier, worse switches, worse feeling coding, just like less good overall. So I just don't recommend buying it, but realistically it would probably be in like B or H here. Now the Zaunkunig M2K. So I complain about the HSK for not having side buttons and being overpriced. The M2K comes in at the modest price of 300 euro for a 24 gram fingertip only mouse made out of carbon fiber. And if that isn't a based mouse, click off the video because you are not watching Watching the right one and I don't even like it which makes it even funnier um, now the Corsair Sabre Pro 8k Hertz I don't know the C tier it just feels like a C tier mouse just gives me that vibe HK gaming Mira series dog shit um, they're probably still producing these honestly just like clones of the G Wolf's hottie M Ninjutsu origin 1x I'm feeling a high C tier low B tier um, just a solid mouse from Ninjutsu not as good as their katana which has recently dropped um, I haven't actually used the katana, but I put it on this list. Uh, wait, so D tier can also stand for didn't use. Um, where the katana is going to go, along with the Fnatic Bolt, which I have on my desk, but can't speak about due to embargo reasons. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up quickly. But what was I talking about? I totally forgot. Oh yeah, the Origin 1X. It's basically a modern version of the Microsoft IE 3.0. It's a bit smaller, and I did enjoy the shape for claw grip, but it's not really a mouse that I strongly recommend. Um, but it's available for like $80 with decent specs, well implemented, $33.35. Um, the Pulsar x the original wired one, that's going in the D tier. I really did not enjoy that mouse. But they are making it, they made improvements with the x Wireless and the x V2 might even be better. Quadraclix RBT, this is a pseudoscience mouse that was supposedly better for like, what was it, finger ergonomics? Something stupid. They had like a very real doctor give a like write a paper about it it was insane honestly i can't believe they sent me one for a review next up logitech g305 okay this is the king of the c tier the g305 especially stock is a good not great mouse if you can find one for like 40 bucks then it's certainly a good deal and if you're just looking for a cheap wireless mouse it'll get the job done uh, but it's not like the best performing mouse you're ever gonna feel and the weight out of the box is really shit you want to get some lighter batteries um, because that will make a big difference. Like, you can make it 15 grams lighter. Now, HK Gaming Sirius M, this is HK Gaming's Final Mouse clone. Why would you buy a Final Mouse when you can buy HK Gaming's version? Um, absolutely dog shit mouse. Viper 8K Hertz, so based. I need as many poles as possible. 8,000 Hertz polling rate. That's eight times faster than 1K Hertz polling rate, which is like, at that point, why isn't everybody using the Viper 8K Hertz? That's what I think, personally. Um, now we have the Cooler Master, Master Mouse 720. It's going to go in the D tier. The shape is a love-or-hate situation. It's a clone of one of Cooler Master's old mice, I think called the Zornet. Um, but Rocket Jump Ninja said it was bad. If he said the shape is bad, then how could anybody like it? The button quality on mine was absolutely horrendous. It uses some optical switches, and the implementation was just not up to par. But the weight is good, and the shape will fit like a glove for some. Amazon Basics Mouse, I've reviewed one at some point, I guess. That's why it's on the tier list Quite Quite bad. Hello Kitty mouse. I actually wound up breaking this mouse. So sad. But there is the Hello Kitty Viper Mini, which I guess would be in the base tier. Um, so yeah, I guess it can stay up there. This is the mouse with a fan in it. I unfortunately lost this mouse while moving, and I don't know. I just don't have much to say about it. The fan was a complete gimmick. You couldn't feel it. 
but it existed, so that's kind of cool. Now we have the bloody A70, the best Minecraft mouse of all time, and an absolutely horrible mouse to actually use. Um, that's really all that needs to be said about it. The Air 58, I was looking at the prices of these the other day, still around 200 bucks. That's kind of crazy. Um, so I wouldn't recommend buying one. It is a really large mouse, so unless you're just looking for a large, light mouse, um, I wouldn't recommend going for the Air 58. I don't even know where it belongs, wherever it winds up. Dog shit, I suppose. That did remind me of the issue that the Air 58 had with the scroll wheel, but regardless, when it came out, it was definitely ahead of its time, and there are still so many Fortnite pros that use it, which is kind of crazy to me. Next up, Piranha Mouse Mods. I would say pr getting close to the age here. Like, he has been making over the past years, like, steady improvements. Now he offers the mod kits where you can put together a 3D printed mouse yourself. I should just go to his website. So you can either buy the mouse pre-built or just mod your own mouse with the components that he sells you. You can see these are all the specs and the quality is getting better. I used to shit on Piranha Mouse Mods because it just felt cheap for the premium prices they were being sold at. But now they're getting up there um, despite still not being perfect in terms of feeling. Um, but definitely interesting. Definitely an interesting service. The Razer Basilisk. God, I tried out like the V3 Hyperspeed version. It was just incredibly mid. It's like a worse G502. If you're using a Basilisk, get a grip, man. I'm, I mean, I'm kidding. Um, the Cox CM600. This thing sucks. It's like a, it's like the shape of an actual egg, like the one from a chicken, not the G203. And the CM600 just does not feel good. Incredibly stiff feeling Huano switches, a terrible cable. The weight is light, and that's the only thing the mouse has going for it. Um, the actual feeling is not good. Now we have all of the Zowie C series mice, which I'm going to throw in the A tier, with the exception of the ZA, which I'm going to throw in the base tier. Just because, in my humble opinion, it's just one of the best mouse shapes I have ever used. The A13 in specific has a low button height, thin grip width, but a very high profile hump that just makes contact with your palm like no other mouse. Um, it's truly just a different experience for claw grip. And the FKC series, probably going to go in the B tier just because I think something like the Ducky Feather, which is unfortunately not on this list, is just better. And there are so many FK alternatives already that you don't really need to buy the FK. Um, and the ECC series and just all of the other Zowie mice, you know, they're solid with the C series updates. They have the good cable, slightly lower weights, just overall improved feelings. So yeah, Zowie making a comeback. Eventually they'll go wireless. Maybe, maybe they won't. Next up, the Razer Naga, any of them, just one of the few mice that I have never used. Like, I've never even touched this thing when it's on a display. I should probably use it at some point. Let me know, is the Razer Naga good? Um, now we have the Dornfinger Vino S. This is a German mouse that I haven't posted a review of yet because I just, I don't know, it just feels like a very average mouse. Has Huano switches, it's nothing special in terms of weight, nothing special in terms of cable. It is a true ambidextrous mouse with side buttons on both sides. It's a similar shape to the G Pro X Super Light, but it's a wired version, it's heavier and basically worse in every way. So I don't know what else to say about it. Cooler Master MM731, they actually did fix the wireless before this mouse was basically unusable because the wireless tech was just shit, but they have fixed it since then, and now I would say it's in the C tier. Um, it's just kind of like a worse Origin 1X, I would say, but it has optical switches and a 3370 sensor. Next up is the GameSense MVP Wireless. This went under most people's radars. It's a larger Ambi mouse. It's inspired by the Microsoft WMO shape, not an exact clone. Um, but for $90, 3370 kill 8.0s, the specs are fine, the performance is fine, it just doesn't really move the marks. Um, the weight's like 75 grams, so yeah, it's an option if you want large ambi. Now the Ponage Ultra Custom Symmetrical 2, going towards the top of the B tier. Um, this is, in my opinion, the best mouse from Ponage. It's a wireless mouse inspired by the Viper Mini shape. A bit taller, but easily the closest, like, solid wireless mouse to the Viper Mini. Um, it's a bit overpriced at either 100 or 110 USD but it is the only option if that's the shape you want, and the mouse just performs fine, so gotta give it credit. And last but not least, the Fantech Helios Go XD5. This thing just really wasn't good. A very mini ergo shape, and if you have small hands, you might enjoy the shape, but it had a poorly implemented 3370 when I used it. They may have fixed it by now, but yeah, I was just pretty disappointed with the XD5 all around. Nothing special in terms of weight, buttons felt pretty shit, and like I said, had a sensor issue. Um, so that 
is going to be all for the updated 2022 version of the Ultimate Gaming Mouse tier list. Let me just move that down there, and I mean, I think that this is the perfect list. The lists are only getting better as time goes on, and yeah, that's really going to be all for the list. Anything in B tier or above is what I actually like, recommend and think is a truly good mouse. Uh, these last three on the right of the base tier, they are more based in spirit than in terms of what I actually use, but the rest of the mice in base tier are what I am actually using on the day-to-day, -day, having tried all of these mice. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all for the tier list. As always, if you enjoyed, make sure to show that by liking and subscribing if you'd like to see more tier lists. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. Peace.